Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. You'll get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And when I'm not asking Bruce, hey, how big was Batista's? Well, you know. One of the things I like to do is help people save money. And if you're watching this video right now and you're in a 30 year loan, man, you're overpaying your single biggest bill and you may not even realize it. I want you to do a little experiment for me. Take your calculator out, multiply your monthly house payment by 360 payments. That's how many payments there are in a 30 year loan. That big scary number, that's your total of payments. You're looking at that number? You know you can do better. Keep more of your own money right now and go to savewithconrad.com. Or maybe you've got credit card debt. Man, it's not a matter of if I can save you money with that. Your average interest rate on a credit card is more than 20%. And by the way, all the interest you pay on those credit cards, it's not tax deductible. Whereas the mortgage interest, well, that is tax deductible. So if you owe this debt, it's up to you how to pay it back. Doesn't it make sense to get the cheapest rate possible and the greatest tax deduction possible? Find out how much money you can save right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com. You don't need perfect credit, even scores in the 500s can be approved, and it's no cost out of pocket. But maybe best of all, we're licensed in more than 40 states. We can help more families than ever before. But how much can we save you? Find out right now for free with a quick quote from SaveWithConrad.com. These two gentlemen have long been icons in professional wrestling and now are staples in our adfreeshows.com network. Arn Anderson and Tony Schiavone, no doubt, played major roles in all of our wrestling fandoms and today are continuing to entertain us and wrestling fans the world over as members of All Elite Wrestling. Welcome, Tony Schiavone and Arn Anderson. Hello, Lauren. Thank hey, you Lauren. That, that, that's, a, that's a very nice buildup. That's nicer than I could do, so... Well, good. I, that's why I'm the professional speaker <laughs> and you're just here for our amusement. Right? Oh, there you go. So let me just say that it's great being with everybody on ad free shows again, Arn Anderson, uh, being able to work with him in the eighties was tremendous. Uh, it, uh, it's what made my career. And now here, uh, 30 years later, uh, being able to work with him and being able to talk to you guys and being able for you guys to be with us on ad free shows and being with us on uh, what happened when as well has also made my career as well. I, I wouldn't be where I am right now without guys like Arn Anderson and without you guys here uh, in uh, 2021 in, in AEW. So I just thank you guys for that. I think you got that backwards, Tony. And bad as I hate to put you over because it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. A lot of nights, I'm sure, and a lot of days, you put over something that was really rotten and you did it in a descriptive way and made us look a lot better than we were. And uh, that goes from all of us. And uh, we've always appreciated how you dressed everything up. And I'm going to leave this part of the conversation with one thought. Everybody that knows how the horseman came about on a promo down at the office, we all happened to be in one promo at one time. And we had to cover a lot of ground in about three minutes and, this whole four, four horsemen thing just popped into my head. I can't tell anybody why or how or what it was that, that got it there, but I plugged it in. It stuck, but had Tony Schiavone not walked off the set and went over to me and said, Jesus Christ, aren't you just named you guys? You're on to something. So you validated it, which told us to go ahead and go with it. I don't think I've ever given you credit for that. And you should take your place in history with something that became iconic and as people are still talking about today. So I don't know if I've ever thanked you for that. I'm only going to do it once and then I'm going to take the credit from now on. That's it. <laughs> Tony, how does it feel to get credit for something that you said offhanded 35 years ago? Well, you know, I, I knew they were onto something, Lauren, and I knew that uh, I knew that they were big. I didn't realize how I didn't realize about the longevity. I don't think any, any of us realized about longevity. You know, we just, uh, as Dusty Rhodes used to always say, we're just kind of riding on the lightning bolt and, uh, we were doing some great things and listen, I'm telling you, and I, and I don't want to, I don't want to go into detail, but, uh, I just held the mic and talked Arn and those guys back in the eighties. And for you guys who are with us on what happened when we're going back and, at least we're trying to going back and looking at each and every episode of world championship wrestling from 1986, which we think was Crockett's best year. But those guys worked every day of the week, twice on Saturday, sometimes twice on Sunday. Sometimes they had to work or they didn't get paid. 
Uh, and those were the real stars. So I'm, I'm glad I was a part of it. And, uh, my, I tip my cap to, to them. There's nothing, if you haven't had a chance, I know they haven't put it on the peacock or as we like to say, what happened when they haven't put it on the cock yet. Uh, they, uh, um, they haven't put 1986 on there, but they put 1993 on there. So hopefully it'll get on there very soon. Sounds good to me. I know I've been enjoying the stuff from 86. I was uh, not even a glimmer in my father's eye in the 80s, Tony. So mm. this has been really fun to relive mm. the yeah. joy and wonder of those days with you and Conrad Thompson. And of course, tons of good promos from Arn Anderson on your yeah. show yeah. lately. Great stuff. I'm loving yeah. it. Speaking of loving it, we have a brand new member joining us tonight on this Zoom. Who wants to talk to you? It's Hornet's Beard Guy. I'm going to need to know your real name because I sound like an idiot referring to you as Hornet's Beard Guy. What's up? Yeah, uh, so Nick, that's my real name. Nick Adams, Hornet's Beard Guy. That's my Twitter handle. Be sure to follow me. Um, so Tony, I hear you're a, a Batman fan as I am myself. Sure. Love Batman. Have a whole entire library of, you know, backlog of comics and all that good stuff. Um, so what, I know you got a lot of cool stuff in your back cave. What's, what would you say is like the, um, the piece de resistance hmm. of that collection? Well, uh, back here, uh, right here, I've got, uh, let's see, I've got the, uh, the Shakespeare bust, uh, where Adam West used to open it up and turn it and go down the bat cave. Uh, I've got a Batman mask yeah, that cool. I got it at C2E2. Uh, I got this great statue. My daughter got me. It's it's Batman and uh, and Catwoman hugging each other. The Adam West Batman. So that's cool. I got a lot of Batman collection over here uh, that I, but uh, most of the stuff is is here. And I've got a kind of a small, tiny replica of the of the original Batmobile. So now, now do you get into the uh, do you get into the Funko Pop craze too? Do you collect any Batman Funkos? I've got I've got one I've got one Batman Funko somebody gave me. Uh, Pondwater Dave's on here. Uh, uh, Dave, I don't know. You, you didn't give me this Funko Batman, did you? You gave me the Funko uh, Spam can. But yeah, uh, I gave I gave you the Batman. Is it the one where he's on the roof? Him yes, and Robin are. Yes. Yes. Let me yeah, get that. Hang on a second. Um, and, and real quick, uh, you know, uh, while Tony's getting that, I just wanted to, um, you know, it's kind of been on the fence about this. Uh, at free shows, whether to join, whether not to join, but um, you know, my my good buddy, uh, I, I I heard um, Efren uh, from Saved by the Pod was doing a game night, and I'm all about game shows. I dig I dig game shows, so I you know I said that's it, that's the trigger, that's the, that's the clincher for me. I'm on board, uh, getting my push, as Jr. likes to say, that is push, getting my push. Uh, not a top guy yet, but I'll get there. Yeah. But um, so yeah, that that's why I'm um, and and I had no idea that uh, this was part of the experience. I mean, so if this yeah. is what it's about, I mean, I'm 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 on board. Yeah, we we'll do sure. a lot more of that. Uh, here's uh, the Funko uh, Batman Commissioner Gordon and the, uh, and I think this thing lights up here. Yeah, that lights up. So there you go. Yay! So that's my. I think that's my only uh, Batman Funko pop I have. But uh, I like to collect that stuff. I really do. And. Uh, I've got some of the uh, some of the graphic novels. Uh, I don't have all of them, you know. I mean, there's been so many of them, you know. But I've got some that I remember back in the '90s, like Cataclysm, that I was, you know, into. And uh, so, yeah, I just uh, I like Batman because he's a regular guy, you know, like I am, and like Arn is regular guy. I'm I'm, I'm irregular. Yes, not, you are. Not regular. Yes, you are. Yeah, I, I don't think Arn, there's nothing normal or regular about Arn Anderson, I would yeah. venture to say. Nick, thank you for that great question. That was a fun Thanks, one. Uh, yeah. Tony, Tony yeah. Schiavone is a big nerd. Tony, tell us about your graphic novel coming mm. soon. Uh, it's called Butts and Seats. It's uh, The pre-sale is almost done, and it'll end on Friday, and then it goes on sale. And uh, it's, uh, it's written by a, a gentleman named Dirk Manning. We have 24, count them, 24 artists working on this. One artist per chapter uh, for 10 chapters. And then we've got some bonus stories that we've unlocked because of, the, uh, because of the stretch goals we've had. And we've also got somebody uh, uh, designing uh, bridges between the chapters. So we've got a lot and a different artist working on the cover. So 
Uh, it's uh, it's at buttsandseatscomic.com. I originally, and I've told this story on many podcasts, I originally did not want to call it Butts and Seats because of maybe there was a negative connotation. Uh, and I didn't want, you know, uh, I didn't want people to think that it was all about uh, my deal with Mick, Mick Foley. But I kind of relented. I wanted to be called I Jabroni uh, because kind of that's what I do, put guys over. So, uh, but they convinced me to call it butts and seats. So, um, yeah, we're really excited about it, really are. And I'm sure you've seen plenty of uh, things on social media about it as well. We sure have. I'm also excited about it. I am disappointed that I will not be uh, written in as your love interest in replacement of Lois. If you guys missed that uh, podcast, which dropped today, got a little rib on the Shivani. So that was fun stuff. All right, we have another brand new Ad Free Shows member joining us tonight. First of all, first of all, though, Arn, listen to me, easy for me to say. Arn, if you had a graphic novel, which maybe one day, right? What would yours be called? Ah, uh, my own comic book? Yes. Wow. I don't know. Anybody out there got any suggestions? I know somebody. There's a hand, not yours. Forget it. Forget Let's it, hear them, friends. Tell anybody us. got anything out there? I want to know. As we go around for everyone to um, ask questions, if you have a good idea for this, let us know. I think we have to work Spinebuster into the name somewhere. Well, I would think so. so. Anyway. That would be think good. So too, Tony? Yeah. You're so cute. You're the I, best. Anyway. <laughs> Jose Santiago is here for the very first time. Good evening. Hello. How are you guys doing tonight? Hello. Hi, Hello. Lauren. I'm Mr. Shivani. How are you, sir? Good, good, Jose. Mr. How Anderson, you? how are you, sir? Jose, how are you? Pretty good, pretty good. So um, this is the first time I've actually been able to test out the features on the Zoom call. Um, definitely great things. Um, Mr. Shivani, I'd like to ask you a question. Sure. Have you received a package recently to your home within the last week and a half? Wow, I've received a number of number of packages. Uh, One that possibly could resemble the shirt that I'm currently. Oh wearing. yes, I received that absolutely. Or did you send that to me, or that nut uh, nutball bad money slim sent those to me? That was all me, sir. Oh really? Yes, sir. <laughs> Tell me the story behind that, because I know he's okay. like. He's okay. like what he's like whacked in the brain. I wasn't really sure when you started talking that you were, but yeah, no. So you know, if you've ever seen his stories on Instagram or Snapchat anywhere, he's constantly doing that upside down. Yeah. So every time that he does that, it goes into the whole uh hogwashing that you and Conrad came up with way back in the day when you were doing the the watch alongs mm -hmm. you came up with that yeah and i thought it's like constantly i talked to jd hoop who's the person who came up with the design and i talked to him and i told him what if we come up with a design like the nba logo mm. with him being upside down mm. so he basically you know brainstormed that came up with the design within three weeks and we put it on a shirt and i figure you know the first person i should send this to is to mr shibani you were the first one that came to mind. I sent wow. one to Conrad. Okay. Um, there's a few other people that are out there that got that shirt and stuff, but it, it's mainly like a gag thing. And he he got a real big giant crack out of it completely. I bet he, did. he was not expecting it. It's like he was like, right. dude, I was like, it's like I don't know what to say. I was like, well, you don't really have much to say because you're constantly doing that constantly. So why not just make you into a logo now? Yeah. Well, there you go. So. But, but he's definitely running with it. So I, okay. I, I wanted to know, uh, did, did you like the color or stuff? Yeah. The, the, uh, see, you, I, I think there were three in there, right? I like the red one. Yes. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, because like I, I, I was trying to go with the Georgia colors, but yeah. it's like the, the store doesn't have like close yeah. to it. So sure. kind of came up with well, what I could one now. Right. So it's like, it was like the curiosity was like, I wonder if you got them already, if you've seen them and whatnot. I sure did. And, and so, I thank you for that. I, I can tell you that I have... Close to ten thousand t-shirts. <laughs> I just don't have room for all my t-shirts. We had uh, we had recently Barstool Sports come uh, to do an interview with me and do an interview mm -hmm. with a bunch of us at AEW. Our last, I think, our last pay per view, and mm -hmm. they uh, they said, "Hey, uh, we're going to send you some stuff." I said, "Really?" They said, "Yeah." 
what do you like? I said, anything but a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and they sent me a t-shirt. So, uh, Here's the thing. I sent Dave Silva one. Yeah, you had, to, had to make it six L, didn't you? Oh six, yeah. yeah. You, well, that see the the thing is, Silva has a shirt that he's supposed to be sending you also. Oh God. Yeah, I, but this one's funnier because it's got Silva on it. Okay. <laughs> so hope that, hope that I won't wear for sure. I will. Not oh, wear. there you go. So you can just put it in the closet with a mark in the back. It's like do not ever wear. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jose. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, sir. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Jose and Tony. My goodness, 10,000 t shirts. Yeah, 10,000 t shirts. Too much. You Lauren, need... wh wh why do you have your hair up on top of your head tonight? What's what, Wait, that's first time why is everyone seen. doing this to me? Uh, okay, I, I, I don't know. Usually your hair is down. And... Well, yeah, last time I saw you, I got it bleached in Florida. And so uh, that threw my appointment off. So I'm like a week late on my bleach and tone. But honey, I assure you, I will be blonde and fabulous again tomorrow. So okay. there you go. Lauren, <laughs> Lauren, listen, you would look good in a burlap bag, honey. Don't worry about it. Arn is my favorite. I just, I love you guys. This Do not great. take any flack over that hairdo. If I had hair... It'd be like Furlan Husky. It'd be about a <laughs> foot and a half on top of my head and blowed straight back. I get it. It's a wrestling podcast, but he's saving us money on our mortgage. Do you really trust this process? The reviews don't lie. Five-star review after five-star review. We make it fast. We make it easy. And it's no cost or obligation. Give us a shot to earn your business. I'm telling you, you'll be glad you did, especially if you like keeping more of your own money. You don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket. So what are you waiting for? Hurry to SaveWithConrad.com. That sounds like a plan. Huh. Speaking of hair, huh? Tony Schiavone, you got a head full of it. It's beautiful. Adam mm -hmm. Hunter, how are you? Uh, I'm doing all right tonight, Lauren. How are you? Well... I see you're still rocking those stupid Georgia Bulldogs hats. Well, I'm waiting on mine to come in the mail, but I don't know if it's on its way yet. Not yet. <laughs> Arn, Tony, how you guys doing tonight? Doing great. Yeah, go dogs. Yes, yes sir. sir. Go dogs. God, I love you, Arn, for that. Love you yeah. for that. Go dogs, Tony. You go dogs. I was at Sanford. I was at Sanford Stadium all day today. Oh man. Yeah. Hashtag humble brag must be yeah. nice. Yeah. Well, it was. It was kind of. Uh, uh, it was a lot of bullshit, but I was there. Okay. <laughs> no, nah, I just just a quick question. Uh, during your interview with Britt Baker today, did I hear you give her a future endeavor? Yeah, I gave her. A, I've given her a lot of future endeavors. I thought endeavors. I heard that on the, okay. on the interview. I just I didn't know if that was a little poke or what that was, but no, I, no. I rather enjoyed that. No, that line was actually given to me by one of my producers, so I I that wasn't me going off on my own. All right. Well, I appreciate you being here tonight, guys. Y'all have a good one. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Great stuff. AJ Espinoza, how are you? I'm doing well. And yourself, Lauren? Well, I was better before I got dragged for having ugly hair, but it's fine. Holy, he made me. You know, wait a minute. I have a, revel, a revelation here. Yeah. That is not who he says he is with that deep ass voice. Ooh, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, that, that is Barry White. <laughs> in disguise yes. give me some of that me, yeah you can't get enough of your love baby. <laughs> can't get enough of your love baby. Oh. <laughs> told you there you go <laughs> oh this is such an honor to speak to both of you uh this evening um ours got me turning red over here this is going to be bad <laughs> going don't go with the black shirt but uh i wanted to ask both of you just from Tony, from you sitting at ringside, Arn, you being in the ring, and excluding yourself from this, Arn, what has been your best rivalry that you witnessed over your careers? Like, you can actually just sit there and, like, you got lost in it, Tony. Like, when you're calling the match, like, you can't even, you're, it's almost like you're the one watching it from front row. Like, it really brought yeah. you into it. And same thing for you, Arn, is there a rivalry that maybe you witnessed maybe as a backstage producer or even in your career where the backstage, you're just like, ah, and this is just really great. These two guys are just having a great story, and I'd love to see it play out. You know, uh, one that probably doesn't get enough credit, but if you go back and watch it, I think you'll agree. 
Chris Benoit and Booker T had a best of seven series and uh, it went all seven matches and that those guys weren't getting the full push back then. It wasn't like they were superstars when the thing started. But by the time it was over, because all every one of those matches were different, the quality of performance was incredible. That's one that I remember that, that didn't get a lot of press, but probably should have. And some people should go back and open it up and re, you know, relook at it and see what you think. You know what? I, one. yeah, that is a great one. I, and I didn't even, I had forgotten about that, but you know, you're right. Uh, that, that was tremendous. I, uh, it, it's hard. It's I, I've always said the best matches and the best rivalries, uh, AJ, just like you said, ones where as a announcer, I quit being an announcer and become a fan. And I, I get into that and, uh, you know, I can, uh, we're looking at 86 and I, I'm thinking about just the rivalry between dusty and the horseman and Magnum and the horseman and Magnum and Nikita. And, uh, those, and, and I say those because I was, a, I was, I had been just a super fan prior to that. And now here five years later, after being a super fan, I was working with these guys. So I was still a fan calling those matches. I was really into it. It's, it's, it's changed for me now, but I still really, I enjoy the matches, but it's, it's, it's a whole lot different than it used to be for me because I mean, I was the age of the guys and now all, mm -hmm. all the guys and girls I call for are kids, right? <laughs> the age of my kids. So it's a little <laughs> bit different, but I, I felt like one of the team. And, um, uh, if you go back and listen to some of those, uh, some of those interviews that Dusty did about Arn and, uh, Talk, listen to the uh, the interviews that Arn and Ole and Tully and Rick did about Dusty or about Magnum back then. Those were the greatest rivalries in wrestling. Those were, I mean, those are those are ones that have stood the test of time. And so those are the ones that I feel uh, that I was very excited about watching uh, because I felt a part of it. Uh, now I, I can't I, I can't go without saying that uh, that revolution a, a year ago when. Uh, Hangman and Kenny Omega took on the Young Bucks. Uh, that was one of the greatest matches I've ever called as far as, uh, and, and I know wrestling has changed a great deal from what they do now to what we did back in the 80s, but that was one of the greatest matches. I also enjoy when I was in WWE uh, that one year, uh, Hulk Hogan and Big Boss Man. That was pretty good rivalry too. So those are the ones I remember. Well, I appreciate that, Tony. That is yeah. some, you're covering like all different areas. You're covering 80s, you're covering yeah. 90s. yeah. I really appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Art. <laughs> well, and I'll just add this to that. And if you think about it from, let's just say the first of 86, when the horseman, when it was that, that original stable of horsemen, when it was Tully and Ole and myself and JJ and Rick mm -hmm. and the actual war was with dusty and right. all, all the other pieces were interchangeable. Anybody you put as his partner, like the road warriors, after we broke his leg, mm -hmm. came back for the first time in Philly, mm -hmm. painted up with the road warrior paint and all that. When those doors flew open and that road warrior music played, mm -hmm. I haven't felt anything like that. So right. I think it's a credit to, to the war that the horseman had against dusty and anybody that, that wandered into that, to that uh, group was made pretty much. Yeah. It was, uh, you, you, again, guys, you need to, if you can, I don't know what's on YouTube out there, but if you want to see how wrestling interviews should be done, you need to look at 1986. And the, some of that stuff is classic. I mean, I go back and, and take a look at some of the stuff and, and I didn't, I remembered it. I've forgotten about it, but then now I, when I see it again, I remember it that Rick and Arn and the horseman would go out and Dusty would come out and do an interview. It would be great. The horseman would come out and do a better interview. So what would Dusty do? He'd come back, back out again to try to top that. And it was like, it was just tremendous off the cuff, unscripted bullshit. And it was just wonderful, wonderful to be a part of it. Well, thank you so much, Arn and Tony. This has been a, a great uh, experience to talk to both of you and some great rivalries there. And Arn's got me itching now to go try to watch that best of seven between uh, Benoit and Booker now. Yeah. I definitely would. Thank you. Really good stuff. Thank you for joining us tonight, AJ. Mike Whitaker, thank you for joining us. How are you? Hey, Lauren, how are you doing? Meh. 
<laughs> hey, Aaron. Hey, Tony. How you guys doing? Mike, Mike, what's up, buddy? How's it going? I'm doing good. Uh, my question for y'all is, you know, y'all lived in, both y'all actually, lived in the same house, you know, 20 something years, same town, same area. Yeah. When you guys go out to Walmart, go out to a restaurant or Pig Wiggly, wherever you go, do you still get a bunch of people coming up to you asking for your autograph, you, you know, all that other stuff? Or is it just, hey, Tony, hey, Arn, how y'all doing? Um, I, I get a lot more now because of AEW. Uh, and there are some guys who remember the old school. But for that 18-year uh, hiatus I took, I was kind of under the radar, which is kind of the way I liked it. But now I'm getting, uh, I'm getting a lot more notice because of the exposure of AEW. Yeah, you know, I've always had people over the years randomly. It was never 10 in a week that would come up and say anything. But, you know, maybe once a week I'll have somebody, they'll either look at you like, and then they're almost mumble to themselves, that's him, that's him, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And then people will come up and just be very polite. I've never had an issue with anybody being less than polite. Hey, I used to watch you when I was a kid growing up, my grandmother hated your guts, all that stuff that really made me feel good that we had done our job. So it's still, uh, you know, no matter what anybody says, it's, it's nice to be recognized and not just the fact that you're on TV, but for your body of work. And that's what I find that wrestling fans are so informed. They remember they know the individual subject that they're talking about. And it just, it just makes you feel good about what you've done with your life. Awesome. Uh, another quick question for Tony. Yeah. Next time you um, go up to your little cabin in the woods, any yeah. chance we can get lunch? Cause that's kind of my neck of the woods. Where oh, you're, you're up at. you're up in North Georgia. I am. I'm, wow. I'm right down the road from the Dillard house and everything. Oh, wow. How about that? We, uh, we talked about going up to blue Ridge and getting a cabin up there. Right. Yeah, yeah, so that's not far from me. So yeah, so absolutely, absolutely, awesome, awesome, cool, and thank you guys very much. This is Thanks, why I Mike. became a top guy talking to you guys and everything else. Y'all, thank awesome. you, thank you. I appreciate that. We appreciate, appreciate you. It. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you, Arn. Tony lives across town from me. I ask him to get coffee. I ask him to get daiquiris. I ask him to get lunch. I ask him to get dinner. I ask him to get massages. I ask him to get everything, and it's always, "I'm sorry, bitch. I'm too busy for you." Thanks, <laughs> massages. So. uh <laughs> That that got James Elcori up. I don't uh, believe I don't believe a word that she just said. So so actually I, I came through to Kula today, you know, on my way to Athens. How do you dick? On, on three six on three sixteen. Okay. How could you? Okay. I always have time for you, Tony. I I'm sorry you. that you don't have time for me. <laughs> it's okay. Oh God, get a room. <laughs> Corey Ryan Forrester, the yeah, most yeah. famous of the Sad News Bears. How are Ooh. you? Hey, 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 Tony and Arn, what's up? Tell us a joke. Tell us a joke, Corey. It better be good. No, I'm good. All uh, right. I, <laughs> <laughs> I just want hey, listen. I don't have a question. I just want to come over here, come on here, and put both of you guys over. This uh, this past year has been very difficult for, I mean, everybody. Sure. Uh, and one one thing that has really gotten me through on days when I was like, man, you know, I, we've all lost sight of ourselves, especially some of those uh, of us in the entertainment business who have lost our complete identity. I don't know what to do, but I can turn on what happened when I can turn on Arn and I can lose myself for a couple hours because you guys are so entertaining. And I also have to give you a personal both of you guys a personal thank you. Uh, Tony knows this Arn, maybe not. and It's fine. But over the past year, I've got I've kind of gotten myself over a little bit more in my career using this uh, wrestler persona, the buttercream dream, Ugh. who who is. Yeah, Tony, shut the fuck up. It's fine. I'm talking to Arn. Right now. OK, I, well, but, said. well, said. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the deal. Here's the deal. You guys like when I was a kid. I mean, it was it was WCW. It was the Four Horsemen. It was it was Arn Anderson. It was Tony Schiavone. And so much of my and I say this in quotes, promo skills that I've used to create this character came from that old school uh, uh, wrestling, you know, four horsemen type. And, and to be able to keep up with you guys now in a completely new format that is so entertaining is just great. I appreciate the work that you guys do because I know you put a lot of work into it. I appreciate everything that you do for your fans. And I just appreciate your love for, 
the game because that is what really – that's what inspires me the most is how much you guys truly love what you do. And I just want to tell you that uh, I'm a big fan and I always will be and uh, appreciate you. All right, Corey, and thanks, buddy. I appreciate you saying all that. I, let me just say this quickly. Uh, our love for the game is never – it's kind of dwindled at times because of our, <laughs> our because of our working uh, where we worked. But I think that uh, I think that working for AEW, working for Tony Khan, has uh, has really lit lit the fire into me again. And I think Arn, you would you would agree that it's it's just great being backstage now. When at times in other jobs we weren't so happy backstage. I can be perfectly honest with you guys. Probably two years ago. I was on the verge of just hating the wrestling business because of the trap I was in, the job I was in, the pressure I was in, and it was the work schedule no one will ever understand. Uh, back in those days, we were covering the entire planet, and you would go out for two weeks and come all the way back to the States and do a TV, and then you would go out on another eight or nine day run and you got to see your family just occasionally and it's a very very difficult business and i loved this business since i was eight years old uh and i had gotten to the point where i was just about ready to just hang it up and uh thank god for both tony and myself who had a couple of conversations before we came back to work at, with uh AEW, and I tell you what, it's been nothing but a pleasure. I can't tell Tony Khan enough times, and I've already got a job. This is not me just sucking ass. Yeah. But he has treated me nicer as a man and as a human being and a former talent and a current mouthpiece for Cody Rhodes. He made me feel good about the business again, guys, which yeah. made me turn around and want to do anything that you guys want or try to do it so we can pass that on and you guys enjoy the business again as well. Yeah. Very well said. He's, he's a great leader for us. And when you have a person who's a great leader that makes you care about your job, you, you do better, you work better. So, uh, just a, a story back in 2017, I believe it was maybe 2016, the WWE came to, uh, Phillips arena and I got in touch with Arn, and he said, I'll get you backstage. So I'm thinking, you know, I, hey, you know, maybe I like to work backstage as an agent or a producer or something. And I walk backstage to the, the room that Arn and uh, Scott Armstrong was in and Fit Finley and Jamie Malenko. Malenko and Jamie Noble. And it was like a fucking morgue. Those guys were in, those guys were in a, like, they were like fucking in a bad mood. And like, and I walked away from there and says, nope, I don't want any part of this, buddy. Uh, but, uh, it's very, it's so unlike that now of what we got backstage. So yeah, he's, uh, he's changed the business for us. And that's why I get so pissed off when, when people say bad things about him online and on Twitter and on, on social media, uh, it, it blows me away. It fucking blows me away that people out there want companies to fail. Why would you want that? Why would you want any company to fail? I don't want any company to fail. I don't want any person to fail in any walk of life. I want everybody to be successful. So I, I don't get that. And uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm just kind of rambling on here, but I agree with everything Arn says. Uh, it's just great being backstage. And how it transfers to you guys. And, and let me just say this, cause I haven't said it yet. It is not lost on me. What time it is Eastern time. If these are work nights for a lot of people, a lot of people have early wake ups. The fact that you guys showed up here tonight, is the reason we love you and we love wrestling fans and we're honored to be here this this time of night. So if we didn't feel good about the business, if I was in the place that I was at two years ago, we wouldn't be having this conversation because I'd be off the radar. I'd be fishing in Aruba or something, but, uh, damn, it, it allows us <laughs> to, to pass that sounds better. <laughs> well, I'm still going to do that, but just not tonight. <laughs> So thank you guys for all being thank here you. late. And yeah. We appreciate it. Corey, and thanks for keeping your shirt on, buddy. Yeah, you're welcome. And I appreciate y'all uh, uh, allowing me the time to talk. And sincerely, I, Tony, I know we bullshit each other a lot, but yeah. I still I still mark out when we talk, man. And I appreciate everything y'all do. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, you got a fan for life, man. Just thanks, I, man. I love you guys, and I appreciate y'all having me on. Thank you. Corey thank had, you. Corey had the, the funniest tweet, uh, one of the funniest <laughs> tweets ever. 
and I laughed about it for freaking days. It was a sign from a church. Remember that, Corey? Yeah, that was a year ago, three days ago, actually. Right, it was a, right. it was a sign from a church, and the and and the way that the sign worked out, it said uh, it said Jesus parking lot six o'clock, and I retweeted it, and I retweeted it, and said, "Is this church trying to kick Jesus's ass?" <laughs> <laughs> and That's and, uh, tremendous. and and that actually that actually kind of started me on uh, getting over on Twitter, and here we are. Yeah, so there we yeah. go. One of the great hey, tweets thank of you. all time. Thank you, Tony. All right, buddy. Thanks Later, y'all. Well, Skew, thank you for joining Skew. us. Corey Ryan, <laughs> Corey Ryan Forrester. He is on Cameo and Twitter. Just look for the Buttercream Dream. He's hilarious. Uh, good stuff. Thank you so much for jumping in. Arn, you guys are so sweet. We're glad to have you guys back in the business. And Tony, yeah. I will be fishing in Aruba next weekend. You're invited. Say yes, Tony. No, I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please. I assure you, Laura. Listen, Lois will say yes too. Just well, here's the here's the here's the deal. Okay, next week's TV, and you know what I got during TV? I got to hang out with Britt, so I can't. Oh, he's name he's name tossing again. <laughs> yeah, I, I got something for Britt Baker. All right, Patrick Ruth, what you got for Woo! us tonight? Good evening, um, Mike. I've met you both before in nashville and at fanboy but do you see the kenny omega rich swan feud as it escalates in a stipulation mode or is it going to be straightforward wrestling so uh well you, you know patrick i'm going to be honest i i've not paid attention to that at all uh because that's another company and i try to just focus on for our company uh i uh I, I don't know what to think of that. What 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 do they got? They got stipulations going on right now. Uh, I think they don't have any stipulations right now. I don't think. But Rich, I thought was going to face Omega sometime down the road. Wasn't yeah, he? that's going to happen. Yeah, I know that. I'm just thinking Don Callis has something in his back pocket that yeah he always knows that he doesn't share it to the last minute. Right. Well, you, uh, Patrick, you don't know that Don Callis is a piece of shit. You do know that, don't you? Yes, I understand yeah, okay. that since right. CCW. Right. But, yeah. uh, All right. Yeah, ECW, um, was, he was that long. What was he, uh, Cyrus the Virus in ECW? Yes. Yeah. Well, he's Don Callis the Virus now. Yeah. yeah. And, um, Arn, I wanted to say that my favorite promo with the Horseman was Ric Flair challenging the NWO to war games. I just think there's nothing after your retirement i just felt it in my heart well i appreciate that yeah that was very real um that wasn't a promo it was just basically me telling all of you guys goodbye there would be no coming back i had wrestled my last match it was crystal clear to me and i had one chance to just thank all all the fans and say goodbye and i'm sure that fueled uh, a lot of the emotion that Rick had in the promo that he cut. And I've also seen, I was there the night you guys got inducted to the hall of fame. And that was so emotional too. I thank you all so much. No, we thank you so much. I never, I never expected that. I was so honored for Dusty to bring us out and induct us and to be on that stage with Barry and JJ and, and Rick, you know, it, Tully, it just, uh, it was such an honor. And the, the reaction that I was so fortunate to get from the fans, just, I'll never forget it as long as I live. And I can't remember what I ate today, but I'll never forget that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Patrick. This is a shoot. Arn Anderson has to be the nicest person I have ever met in my entire life. And wow. uh, it's pretty crazy to wow. think that, he was cutting promos on people back in the day. Yeah. Probably could still spine buster any of us into next right. week. I have one loud verbal out outburst left and two spine busters. And I got to spread them out, Lauren. So you're safe. <laughs> I'm safe. That's good to know. Amy Vaughn, I hope you're safe as well. Yes, I yes, I am. I am, I am. <laughs> Hang on there, Amy. <laughs> she saw Tony and took a flat back bump. <laughs> I constantly have technological problems here. Okay, okay, that's all right. Go ahead. 
Um, I wanted, actually, I have a question for Tony. Yeah. Um, specifically about your uh, Twitter handle and your Instagram name. It has a number 24 in it. Yeah. That's my favorite number. And I was just right. wondering, uh, why is that number, is that number special to you? And what for? No. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's the age I was when uh, we had our first child. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's kind of what we got that from. And uh, it's kind of also been the number that my kids have worn in little league and uh, any sports they play too. So it's kind of like a, a family number. 24. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you, let me tell you a quick story about my third child. Okay. And it has to do with Arn Anderson. Uh, I had had, we had Matt in 1982. We had Laurie uh, in uh, May of 1984. And then Laurie, uh, May 31st, 1984. And then less than a year later, Lois got pregnant with Chris. So we're talking about probably January or February of 1985 now. And I'm doing promos in the locker in the, in the backstage area at Crockett at Crockett's office, like we did on Wednesdays. And I saw Lois walk in the back and talk to Arn. And she had a big smile on his face. And Gene Anderson, who was our producer back then said, all right, next interview is going to be. And Arn kind of told Gene, he said, shut up a second. I got something I want to say. <laughs> and, and he said, our fat short round dumpy announcer is getting ready to have another baby. Can you not keep it in your pants? And that's how I learned I was having my third child. Arn Anderson announced it to me and all the wrestlers that day. So, and obviously the answer was no. <laughs> and cussing Gene Anderson, as I look back on it, yeah, could have been so detrimental to my health. <laughs> yeah. If Gene, if Gene, uh, Amy, if Gene, if Gene grabbed you, he could really stretch you and really hurt you. So oh, shit. <laughs> that's right. So that's how I found out about Chris being born. And Chris was born in November of 85. Well, that that's a neat story. Yeah, um, that's that's how not everybody can say their birth announcement was given by Arn Anderson. No, so, I know that no. that's how that's how our lives have kind of been intertwined all these years, you know. Right there. Wonderful. And I do want to say, and you can ask some of my friends in the chat, Arn, you and Tully are my favorite uh tag team wrestlers. And um I'm just loving to get to uh, listen to your podcast and watch you on AEW. And so um, I just am so glad that I was able to uh, talk to you all tonight. Well, and now I'm going to bed because it's, right. it's, it's late. I have to go to work. Thanks, Amy. We, we appreciate you staying up. Thank you. All right. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Amy is one of the best. She's not lying. She upgraded to top guy to do the Arn and Dax watch along situation and she was like an annual member right away so yeah, very good big arn mark over there amy vaughn good mm. stuff justin davis i know you're a mark too what the hell are you doing here well it is an honor to um first of all hello lauren it's good to talk to you again Always. mr shivani love you brother so good mr. mr davis how the pittsburgh uh pirates doing uh, let's, uh, they're, they're shitty as usual. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. You're a Reds fan. I, I'm sorry. I <laughs> okay. Um, Mr. Anderson, it's an honor to talk to you for the second time. I met you at Starcast three. It is uh great to talk to you again. So my pleasure, young man, my pleasure. Um, my question is for you because Lord knows I've asked Tony enough questions. Um, Tony has talked about some wild nights out with, uh, Mr. Flair do you have a favorite night out with Tony and Mr. Flair or just Tony himself that you remember that you would like to share with us? Well, the fact is in those days, you know, it was usually the hotel bar because, you know, we're talking about a lot of nights. It wasn't just weekends or whatever, you know, we, we ran shows on Monday. We ran shows, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, there would be situations where Tony would be on the road with us. And basically we would just go to the, the hotel bar and I'm just going to tell you, Rick would start ordering those triple straight up chilled Stoli kamikazes and he mm -hmm. would order 50 at a time. Yep. Plus whatever we were drinking and we would just get sloshed. Yeah. I mean, it would usually just be a bunch of the boys. And back in those days, it wasn't the good guys partying with the bad guys. We were in separate hotels, separate right. bars, 
And it was right. just a bunch of heels. We had the Midnight Express, Bobby Eaton, some of those guys. Right. You know, and we would just drink until we were just about drop. We would all order a sandwich or something from the from uh, room service before mm-hmm. we headed out, and we just would just get floored. And I'm sure if I could see tape of those days, mm-hmm. I'd probably leave the country because it had to be <laughs> embarrassing. Had to be. Or, or we'd stumble over to Waffle House. We've done that too. Yes. But, yeah. But, but hanging out, mother. yeah. So hanging out with the heels was always the, 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 lot of fun. And, you know, we always, uh, I always wondered, uh, a lot of times, especially later why we all got rip roaring drunk and flair was never as drunk as we were. And that's because flair didn't drink as much, but he pretended to drink as much as we were. Remember that Arn? I mean, he would well, like, Here's the trick guys. Yeah. We would, he would, he would call for a shot. He'd hand each guy like two, now uh, tr- a straight up, a triple straight up chilled Stoli Kamikaze. Mm-hmm. Two of those will knock you on your ass. I don't know All if right. you guys have had one order one Yeah, and see, but Rick's deal was he would go, okay, here's the toast to Tony Schiavone and yeah. everybody would dump him and he'd throw it right over his shoulder. <laughs> and so, i i yeah. saw it one time and i started watching him and that yeah. was every time yeah so yeah his ml was get everybody else drunk and laugh at him so uh but yeah there were some good things man some mr uh, anderson uh that was way more of an answer than i would expect so thank you so much i appreciate it. i love the show i really appreciate your honesty and your expertise and your years of service to the business it's an honor to talk to you well hey listen thanks for that and let everybody know out there that we may have something very exciting, a uh, change coming uh, where the podcast is concerned. We're still working. It's in the infancy stage, but we're going to work something and, and make it, give it a whole different feel for you guys and a whole different outlook and, and some of the stuff that we talk about. So I'm super excited for that. I know that if uh, Conrad's making a change, it'll be good because it, it's, if it puts Conrad dust on it, it turns to gold. Absolutely. <laughs> so, and uh, I'm sure you'll do great with it. So I'm excited for it. Thank you, Arn. Thank you. Well, ain't that the truth? Just sprinkle some Conrad dust and everything gets better. Guys, keep that deep kayfabe. I don't know if we're supposed to know that Arn is, is doing something no, different. No, it's, right? it's just some changes. It was, a te- it was a tease. That's all it was. It was changes. a little promo tease. You Tony, have- you're a tease. I'm going to Waffle House this week. Do you want to come? Uh, I can't. <laughs> Fine, fine. All right. This next guy's name is Moose, and there's just no way his mother named him that. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 Lauren. Um, I, I did not get the nickname Moose from my mother. My given name is Mark. Um, but I was given the name Moose when I was in indoctrined into a bouncing group. Uh, I was a bouncer in my younger days. Um, and the fact that I'm sitting here with, with Arn Anderson and Tony Schiavone, uh, I, I, I could cry. Um, what, what, what these two gentlemen actually mean to me um, is, is beyond words. Um, the group I, w- I was brought into w- w- was a group of bouncers, and they were also wrestling fans, and they called themselves the Horsemen. Well, there was only three of them at the time, mm-hmm. and I made number four. And I, I, I'll never forget that, that I stood there and, and I put up the four fingers and they all did the same thing. And from then on out, we were the four horsemen of the bouncing community. Um, so it's an honor to sit here with Arn, the founder of the four horsemen, um, and tell that story. Um, but I, I really don't have a question for you, gentlemen. I just want to tell you what you mean to me. Um, growing up before I got into bouncing and and discovered the friends that I've had for almost 20 years now, um, wrestling was my life. You, you two gentlemen were a big part of me growing up. Um, I would have a really bad day at school. I, as I got older, I'd have a bad day at work and I would come home and I would turn on old WCW tapes and it was really, it's kind of sad, but. I, at one point, people would ask me who my best friend was, and I'd say Tony Schiavone, because I would turn on an old tape, and Tony would would be there to tell me a great wrestling story, and I could always count on Arn's matches be, being steal, show-stealing things, 
So I just want to tell both of you gentlemen from the bottom of my heart, you guys are, are big parts of my life. You guys have inspired me to, to do a lot with my life. Um, and, and thank you so much for putting out the content that both of you put out. Um, 1986, Jim Crockett Promotions, 87, 88. That's my bread and butter. That's the stuff I will literally watch on repeat. And, and to be able to sit here with you gentlemen and tell you that makes, makes me so happy right now. Um, it's also a big week for me because I just bought my first house and me and my wife are moving out, moving out of our apartment right now. This is my walk-in closet um, that I do a stupid little wrestling podcast from. Um, but thank you once again to, to, to put it all in a bow on it. Thank you both so much. Thank you, Lauren, for hosting this. Thank you, Ed, for your shows. Just just know that you guys impact people's lives in, in, in much more meaningful ways. And you are the reason people like you that we're here tonight. Yep. That's right. You just summed it up, my friend. Yeah. There, there's a bond between wrestlers and announcers and fans that most of us aren't even aware of, you know, uh, until we hear something like that. And it might as well have been that we went to the same high school. You just personalized everything that we do and everything that wrestling fans do. I can't say any better than that. So yeah. thank you for that. Well said, Arn. I just, uh, Moose, what you said just now makes what we do all worth it. Uh, because we're, you know, we're just like all of you guys. We're just, Arn was a wrestling fan. I was a wrestling fan. But to, to real, when someone says to me, you're the voice of my childhood, you know, I, and they say, oh, I'm sure you hear that all the time. I said, yeah, I do. But I appreciate hearing it because it makes my job, makes me what I do seem worth it. So and, thank and, you for saying that. Yeah. And, and one other thing, I, I called my dad earlier and I said, dad, guess who I get to talk to tonight? He goes, who? I said, Arn Anderson. My dad's 63 years old and goes, shut your effing mouth. My, my, my dad, me and my dad bonded over wrestling. Um, my, my first memory in life is class of champions one. Um, that, that's wow. literally the, the, the first memory I have of my entire life, but me and my dad bonded over wrestling and my dad and my little brother, who I've got to call here in, in a little bit, were the biggest Arn Anderson marks I have ever met. My dad would literally stop doing things on Saturdays and Sundays to go watch you wrestle on TV. He could be cutting the grass and I would have to run outside and say, dad, Arn's on TV or coming up on TV. And he would, he'd leave the mower in the middle of the yard and run in, watch your match and then go back out and finish. Mm. So I just had to tell you that one last thing. So once again, thank you guys. I look forward to getting to know you better as time goes on. Um, but just know that, that, that this is going to be like the highlight of my week. Well, Thanks, you're, Moose. You're part of the family now, pal. That's right. You sure are. And if you're like us, you're wondering why Lawrence has her hair on top of her head. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Moose, Sorry. I liked you for a minute. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. We do. we do. All right. Anyway. Well, I don't know how okay. we transition from that, but I think if anyone's up to that challenge, it's going to be... Pond Water Dave. Where did this picture cut? Where was this taken? I saw this on Twitter uh, just a just a few minutes ago, and right before before y'all came on the air. And my question was going to be, um, what's the story behind that picture, and Jesus. can you really play the piano? No, <laughs> you can't play the piano. I can't, you can't play the piano. No. You can't even type on a freaking keyboard. Hang on a second. Who is that? Let me tell you something. I have no recollect. I, I thought it was something that was just uh, superimposed, or you make yeah. something. I'll be. It's got to be from when I was wrestling, because I've got some hair. Yeah, uh, Dave. Kind of uh, close in on some of those people there. We may be able to recognize what town it's in. The only thing that is that Dennis Condry That's up in the right handed corner. Yeah, it looks like him, but but you can't tell. But I. Everybody else looked like civilians, I think. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, they are. But it looks to me like it's a hotel lobby. Yeah, that's probably back in the Pensacola days, wouldn't you think? No, this had to be in the Crockett days, I swear. Okay. Right, if right. you look at behind, it looks like a Marriott. Yeah. Maybe uh, just in the, like the lobby bar or something. Right. 
Yeah. How about that? But I, but I saw that for the first time tonight when you guys did. So who would have posted that? Dave Silva? Um, let me see if I may still have it on my. I just I like to, I'd like to know where it was from too. Yeah. It wasn't. Um, I just saw that it was, um, they had tagged Conrad in it. So that's why it came up where I saw, I had seen it. Oh, huh. amazing. Unless I can really play and don't remember it. <laughs> remember, we drank heavy in those days, guys. <laughs> no, Conrad posted it. Um, CWF84 was the account that posted it. But um, Conrad retweeted it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, the it's Continental mystery, Wrestling. Yeah. The mystery, that's, no, that's got to be Crockett. Okay. That, it has to be. All right. Because, because when I, if it was Continental, it wouldn't have. I would have been just in like home every night except for Saturday. And I spent the night at uh, a little hotel there in uh, Dothan, Alabama. So it wasn't that. Yeah. And that was every week. Right. Um, also, um, Tony, do you know if the, the next week of 86 is going to be one that y'all are going to be able to do? Yeah, we got the next two weeks in the can, Dave. So the 12th, oh, good, because with the 12th, which dropped today, and of course, uh, was also on ad free shows in, uh, WHW Monday on Monday, we got another one in the can. So, so next, next week's the Saturday of the Crockett cup. Yes. That's the Saturday where we talk about the Crockett cup. Yeah. And oh, I'm looking forward to that because I'm Flair saying, I don't do no jobs in the dome. And then Dusty right. coming right back out and saying, I don't, I don't do, do no, no jobs either. So now well, what? No, well, now what? Yeah. That's, that's the one. Oh. Yeah. I got to go to the Crockett cup. I'm really excited wow. about this one. Yeah. Uh, I just hope that I, I don't know if I was hoping that somebody would, uh, put them on, I don't know, Vimeo or YouTube or something, but apparently we can't do that. So I was hoping we could, uh, it's breaking my heart. Yeah, me too. So we'll see what we and, do. And, um, a good name for a good name for orange graphic novel can be, as always, it was your pleasure. <laughs> I like that. Let's, yeah. go. Let's go with that. Said That's that a lot in 86. Yes. Yeah, you did. Hey, sure did. Orange Thanks, guys. I appreciate your time. All and right, I Dave. I love your hair, Lauren. I love hey. your hair. Don't let them. Don't let hey, them get Dave, you down. Dave, stop hitting the Lauren, <laughs> would you? For crying out loud. Jesus Christ, Dave. Jesus boy, Dave. Christ. But do y'all want me to be honest? Uh, no. no. You're me. <laughs> okay. Good then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lauren's adjusting her top and everything on that one. Jesus, I can't, day. I can't deal with you guys. Okay. What is my life? Why am I here? Josh Rosenbaum, what is your life and why are you here? Oh, listen, I got to get a reaction from Tony and Arn because I know you guys don't watch uh, or look at Twitter a lot, but we have another Hall of Famer in this Zoom. Obviously, Tony, you would be one if you wanted to be. Arn, you're one. But the Southern Wrestling Association enshrined Pondwater Dave into their Hall of Fame this past week. I'd like to know what you two guys think about having a third Hall of Famer because the show might have been called Arn and Pondwater because they're Hall of Famers. But, Tony, let's hear what you got to say about all this. Well, Pondwater Dave, in his defense, uh, was a great referee at one time, I understand. Uh, but he also uh, doesn't know how to keep his thumbs on his hand. So, uh, Dave, show us the thumb that you have detached. Go ahead. Let's see that. Where's that thumb? There it you is. Speak had... so we can see you. There you go. There you go. Had it, he had it detached, and he had to put it back on. That's enough, Dave. That's enough. Okay, I got it. Ew. So, I, just like, I just like congratulate Dave on that. Dave, that's quite an honor. Who else is in the Southern Wrestling Hall of Fame? Stan Hansen, Bruiser Brody, Terry Gordy. Holy shit. Uh, Tug Tyler and Chaz Tyler are going in this year. Um, there's a lot. I, I mean, yeah. they've been to, where is, where is but, this I mean, located? Where is this located? It, it's a, it's a, it's a promoter out of Fort Worth, Texas. It does it. Jim Cornette's in it. Um, it's um his promotion is um IH um WE and um he actually was the promoter that did the parade of champions in 2016 during WrestleMania week. Um 
big NWA parade of champions show that in Fort Worth. It was, uh, and, um, I'd been working for him for, I mean, back when he, back when he started at the Mexican bazaar with, you couldn't probably 20, 20 people. If we had a good show, that damn Mexican but, bazaar, man. Wow. <laughs> hey, wild crowd, one. Uh, yeah. The, the shows might not have been good, but you could get Coca, you could get Coca-Cola in a glass and some elote. So it wasn't a total waste of time. <laughs> Peyote or elote? I just say, say it's the Mexican corn, but yeah, that's it. I've been told here's I need to my, learn how to pronounce it. Here's my real but question, guys. Thank you for guys. mentioning that, Coach. All right. Yeah, you're my boy, Pond Water. Yeah. But here's my real question. I'll be in Atlanta, and I got about six hours. Is there anything by renting a car that I can see that would be 1986 related, like uh, – where you guys shot that uh, maybe a bar you guys went to. I'm staying at the airport Marriott. I mean, that's the first thing I'm doing. But what can be some other things I can see in Atlanta that would tie in some 1986 stuff for me? Okay, Thanks, I'll, 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 give you, I'll give you two of them, uh, Josh. Uh, uh, number one would be to go up to uh, go right up to, mid, to, to downtown and go to Techwood Drive and see i uh, go to the old studios it's changed a great deal they put a couple of cartoon network has a big building in front of it but right in the middle is that mansion there where we used to tape the show right in that mansion there on techwood drive that would be a place to go and there's another place near the airport called malone's it's right the exit north of the airport uh that's where uh, that's where uh, a lot of people got drunk malone's it was simon malone's back then remember that arn yeah, it, and, it, it's and, still there. And one of the reasons is uh, we always usually were there on Sunday night right. after after we did the Omni, and that was the only place other than fast food. Mm -hmm. Once you got heading out towards the airport, it was the only place out there. And yeah. they did stayed open till like one o'clock in the morning and yeah. had food and uh, booze, and it was yeah, right on our way back to the hotel. Yeah, we took, they took care of us. So it's Malone's. It's right off of, uh, I think it's right off Virginia Avenue. It uh, is Virginia Avenue, Virginia Avenue, which is just right North of the airport. So there you and go. And I bet it still looks the same. Yeah, it does. From the outside. It does. I, I haven't been inside of it, but I've been by it. I can't wait to go Saturday night. Thanks guys. All right. You're back. Uh, Tony, I'm actually going to be drinking at Malone's tomorrow. So upon water, Dave, it's about a 15 hour drive for you. Get there soon. Tony no, I sir. If her husband's going to kill me, he's going to have to come to Mississippi to do it. Wow. Jesus. <laughs> Tony Schiavone is the worst. Dave McClay. I hope you're not as bad as Tony. Nah, I'm a great guy. How you guys doing? Hey, Dave. Hey, Dave. Hey, how's it going, Tony? Hey, Ann. How you doing? Very good, sir. Good. Um, I got a question for both of you guys, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, if WCW got relaunched back in 2001 and they had the plan to do the big bang theory pay-per-view um would you guys have been on board with that you know the new leadership of wcw under eric bischoff would you have guys been on board with that and what would your roles have been if that if that happened uh let me answer that for the the answer to me was yes because eric had talked to me about you know that i'm going to buy this company and i'm going to do this and you're still going to be my announcer so i had at one time thought that we were going to still be on TBS under Eric's guidance. So that would have been yes for oh. me. So who knows if AEW would have existed if that yeah. happened? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Just who knows? Right. What about you on? I don't, you know what, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't think I would have survived the cut. They were probably would have started with a lot of new everything. I'd been there for 12 years and I'd about had my run by then. So I probably would not have been included in the plans. I'm, I might've been offered something, but I'm not sure of it. Well, to not include you in the plans would have been really crazy. Let me tell you. Yeah. that I would have been. I appreciate no. that. Thank you very much. You know, sometimes you get burnt out with a system and it doesn't matter if it was WCW. Like I said, I was there 12 years. I was with WWE 19 years, you know, let's face yeah. it. Everybody runs out of ideas and there's only so much you can do 
There's only so many moves that there are with all the variations that, that there are today, but you know, it's pretty simple business. And sometimes your mindset, you just get burnt out on seeing wrestling and you get to a point with a certain product, you, you really get burnt out. So, uh, some the, I, th this was a blessing and I guess it was a, a curse to ever since I broke into business in 1982, I have never been without a job. Most, wow. pe most people quit, get fired. They spend six, eight months away from the business. They show back up. They have another run. I never had a break. I never had a run until I got canned and, uh, with the WWE and, uh, man, you just, you burn out, you run out of stuff and your creativity just, Hey, I can't think of anything new. So it happens. No problem. Main thing is, which a lot of guys don't do is prepare for that day. Save, right. for, save for a rainy day is not just a slogan in our business. Oh, well, I definitely hear you on that one. I mean, like what you guys have done. First of all, let me just thank both of you guys for taking the time to do this. I love everything about ad free shows and everything about your podcasts and thank all you. of Comrade's podcasts very much. You know, it really means a lot to me. It really brightens my day. You know, I, the pandemic got me working extra and I'm really grateful that I really got these podcasts to listen to because I've always been a big wrestling fan. Really appreciate everything you guys do, all you've done for the fans. And um, especially doing this right now, you know, normally Wednesday night is drinking night with the missus, but I just said, I got to go do the zoom real quick. So <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm leaving her downstairs all by herself talking to God knows who <laughs> right now. Yeah. Saying, I, would, <laughs> I would probably guarantee you she's drinking without you. Oh, definitely. Like she, I got to catch up with her. Yeah. She already, <laughs> yeah she's, Drink but, heavily, I, I my probably, friend. After this, I probably got to help carry her upstairs. Well, hey, that's your, if you've got a woman that will drink with you in the middle of the week, hang on to her, brother. That's yeah, solid. Man, that's good. That is solid. <laughs> wow. I I never thought of it that way. But thank you, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. And uh, Lauren, what are, you, what are you drinking? I picked up this bottle of wine from Chateau Alain. Uh-huh. I'll be drinking oh, shit. here in the middle of the week as well. She's a, she is a big time lush, Arn, from what I understand. I love you, Tony. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Dave. Be careful on your roots there, buddy. Uh, you're welcome, Tony. Take care, sir. Have okay, a good buddy. night. All right. With you, Carr. with you and Lauren, this could be like a Dr. Phil episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down for that. Oh, Tony, I have to go be on the Dr. Phil show in a couple of weeks. Will you come with me? No. Okay. Who's next? Kelly Carr is next. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey guys. Um, I have not been having a good week, so I thought I wanted to know if you had any good um, Dusty Rhodes stories. Just any funny stories of Dusty Ro involving Dusty Rhodes. Do, do you mind if I ask what's going on with you right now? Do you, do you not um, feel not feel well? I've not feeling well and i've got a lot of pain issues right now and i i don't have an esophagus and i've got several other issues but I, right now i've been dealing with a lot of pain that's really unmanageable right now so i am so sorry i can i can i know about chronic pain that's one thing i do know about and i, I can almost see it in your face yeah. and it just will wear you out and i'm so sorry for that um Maybe we can do something to make you feel a little better, even just temporarily. Yeah, this has really helped a little bit. We think I know it's late for you to be up and everything, and and we appreciate it more than you know, Tony. The only thing I can tell you that that I remember about Dusty that would lighten the spirits here is that Dusty was probably not only a a former world champion wrestler, but he probably during his time was the world's greatest farter ever. And uh, no one, I mean, it was like loud and wet and long. Second place, the giant, Andre the Giant. Andre and the Giant was second place probably, yeah. No, no, he was first. Oh, uh, he was first? Okay, so Dusty was second. But Dusty used, didn't Dusty used to stick like toilet paper up his ass? 
uh, and during a during a match, and it would it would it would help enhance the the loudness of the sound when he when he was working with you. It's called that a duck. That yeah. was strictly a baby face thing, Tony. It must have been. <laughs> okay. That was he, when, when you jumped ship and went in the baby face locker room. <laughs> no. That's no. the treatment you got. <laughs> yeah. But he was like the best. I mean, they were like, I mean, it's like every time he would do it, I would say, all right, you had to shit your pants that time. You just had to shit your pants. You go, no. I said, God damn. I, those were like, it was like, it was like a, it was like a gimmick fart. You know, it was like. No one could fart that loud and that long and sound that wet, but that's how he was. He was the best at it ever. I'm and sure then, this, this young lady has really enjoyed that. Story. <laughs> okay. Um, and then any good Steiner brother stories? Wow. You know what? This is a, it's a reality. And I'll tell you because it's current over the weekend, I, I did a signing at WrestleCon down in Tampa and, uh, WrestleMania weekend, obviously. And if you remember Rick Steiner, forget about Big Papa Pump. When you first saw Rick Steiner, it probably would have been 85 or 86. You remember how thick his shoulders were? First time you saw him on TV, I mean, they were like grapefruits. Right. So I saw him, him and his brother were down there this weekend. I came around the corner and there he was. And he was like, I mean, he looked fit and all that trim, but he looked like he might've been 220. So I just, it took me a minute to figure out, you know, Jesus Christ, that's Rick Steiner. Went over and we were talking and I went, hey, Robbie, let me, you know, tell me the truth here. You know, it's like, do you look at like your Facebook, if you have Facebook or your wife's Facebook and some of these guys you went to school, I mean, you see pictures of them now, don't they look old as shit? And he looked at me and went, yeah. I said, do we look that bad? Now, you know, I was fishing for a, a positive answer. Mm -hmm. He said, aren't we look like shit too? He said, I said, but <laughs> that's not what I want to rob. He said, I said, I tell the story all the time about coming in the gym and you having 365 pounds on the bar. I thought you were benching. You were doing behind the neck presses. And he looked at me and he went and he raised his shoulder about that high. And he right. said, that's as far as I can raise it. Yeah. And that's reality of what this business does to you. But uh, that's my story. Yeah, well, he and uh, he and his brother, as as, as Arn could, uh, I mean, they were the toughest kids ever, right? And oh yeah, yeah, and it, it's it's like you know, there's there's probably a handful of people in the business that, in reality, you really didn't want to fuck with, and he was one, and uh, probably S Scotty too before he became Big Papa Pump, and you know, obviously Haku was another one, you know, uh, and the Barbarian. Those Steve, guys, you, Steve Williams, Steve Williams, Dr. Death. You just did. You didn't want to fuck with those guys. And for some reason, Eric Bischoff's son, Garrett, who's a grown man now back in the day was like this little punk that would run around and, and fuck around with wrestlers. Okay. And that he would run around and like, he would like hit Rick and hit Scott or something. And they would, they would beat the fuck out of this kid. They would take him and slam him up against the wall. And I would say, God damn, you guys are being rough. They said, fuck it. You know, that's, he wants, he likes this. And Garrett would laugh and he'd go run around. They'd take him again, bam, right up against the wall. I'm thinking, you're going to hurt this kid, buddy. You're going to hurt this kid. And they just laugh. But they were, that's the way they were. They were like, they were like pranksters. I mean, there's, there's a story. I don't know if it's true that uh, they were in Germany one time and Oliver, who was our uh, German announcer, that they got him drunk and they taped his uh, hands behind him, duct taped his hands behind him and he passed out. And they shaved all of his eyebrows off and wrote with swastikas with Sharpies on his forehead and everything and laughed about him. And that's just the way they were. They were like, uh, they were a lot of fun <laughs> to watch fuck up other people. So, yeah, I, I was lis listening to the signer, the Scott signer 83 weeks episode that I'm halfway through. Yeah. And yeah, they apparently were really fun when Eric Bischoff met. Um, the Steiner brothers. So, yeah. But yeah, I miss, I'm trying yeah. To, I'm I, trying I, to I, I miss him. I loved him. I really did. 
I really did. And of course, when, when Scotty became big Papa pump, you know, he, he was out of control. He, he really was. And, uh, we had this angle where JJ, who was the, uh, I guess the uh, chairman or the general manager of WCW at that time, if you guys remember that. And he was going to find big Papa pump and suspend him for actions that night on nitro. And so JJ came out during a commercial break. And of course, a lot of times we did things like off the cuff, right? JJ says, uh, I said, what are you doing now? He said, I'm going to make an announcement that Scott Steiner is going to be suspended and fined. He said, now Scott's going to come out. And he didn't look to me and said, and we're getting the fuck out of here. And JJ said, no, I'm going to stop him like that. And he'll stop when I put the hands up. And I said, you are out of your fucking mind. Three, two, one, we're on the air. JJ, what are you? So we're, we're finding Big Papa Pump for the actions. And he came out. And as soon as he walked out, he and I, and I think today, ran. And a good thing we did because he destroyed the whole fucking set. He took chairs and he threw them everywhere. And I remember telling JJ, I said, good job of stopping him, you dumb fucker. <laughs> okay. And uh, that's just the way he was. When he became, Arn, you said, when he became Big Papa Pump, he was like on another planet. I mean, he was out of his mind. So his body changed and his thought process changed. Yeah. Yeah. And then one more question. Um, Arn, when um, Jeff Jarrett's podcast starts, is that going to affect your podcast since it's going to be coming out on a Tuesday? I uh, hope not. I don't think so. They're uh, totally separate shows. And from what I understand, people listen to them at different times during the day. So, I don't think it'll be an issue. Welcome to Jeff. I think if you guys want to hear him, I'm glad he's there. Yeah. What's the name of the podcast going to be? I am an idiot. <laughs> That's Just going to be the name of your next graphic novel, Tony. Oh, Shabazz. thank you very much, Lauren. You're, you're drunk now, aren't you? And my idea yeah. for Arn Anderson's podcast book graphic novel is obviously should be our rise, spine buster leave. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Let's let's go with it. Yeah. I love it. We're gonna take your advice. That's beautiful. That was perfect. Joey, big I'm man, done. thank you so much. Thanks, Good Joe. To you, as always. John Hickson, what you got for us? Did we lose John? We did. All right. Yeah. Sorry, Adam John. Lucy. Sorry, John. Fuck you. Hi. Hey Adam, what's up, man? Hi, Arn. Hi, Tony. Hi. Um, Hi I'm going to reiterate what Moose, the guy Moose was talking about earlier. I don't really have a question, but like WCW, even though I grew up in Boston, I was a huge WCW fan, and I wish that they ran more up there. But, you know, 605 on Saturday, no matter where I was, I was in the house watching i mean i've li i literally remember leaving a birthday party early one time to rush home and watch wcw saturday night i mean it was so important to me and it was such a shame that it went out of business but i know it had to i mean turner was mismanaging it and all that but it's so great that both you guys are back because like you were saying earlier you really were the voice of my childhood tony and Arn, you were always one of my favorites well, we're glad to be back and we're enjoying ourselves. We're glad you are too. And uh, let's uh, let's get this pandemic thing knocked I out. I love both your podcasts. Thank, Thank you. you. Let my family save your family some cash. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket, but we will save you money. It's not a matter if, it's a matter of how much. Save with Conrad.com. Yeah. It's an honor to talk to both of you. Same to you, sir. Good Thank stuff. you so much. Really glad, really glad to see you, Adam. We're going to start winding this down a little bit. Carl Mandic, what you got for us tonight? Hey, what is good, Lauren? What is good, Arn and Tony? Carl. Real quick. Yeah. Uh, and this goes out to Arn and to Tony. Tony, your last televised appearance was April the 1st, 1990. So this month, 31 years ago? Is that right? Am I doing the math right? My last televised appearance? With the WWF. Wow. It was April the 1st. How about that? It was Wrestling Challenge. Uh, I was doing right. a little research. Arn and, and to Tony, 
Um, Tony, had you stayed there, would we be having this uh, discussion today? Had we I, stayed in the WWF? Correct. Who loves hypotheticals? Yeah. No, you know, I, I, you know, I always like to think about that. If, uh, if the financial agreement that we made over a handshake deal with Vince McMahon would have came to fruition, we would have stayed there and worked our ass off and possibly been there for 10 years. But it, it was a situation that, uh, when you leave one where you get lied to about your money and in this business, fellas, the only power you have, the only bargaining power, the only independence you have in this business is how much money you got in the bank because it allows you to say no to bullshit, maybe to semi bullshit and yes to a lot of cool stuff. But we got the shaft. That's the reason we left Crockett prior to WCW buying it. And we got there and ran into the same thing and it was just too much. And you get to a point in any business with any job where you keep getting the shaft, you got to stand up and just go, Hey, no. And, uh, had that have went through and Tully and I've stayed there because they used us good. We cannot argue about the way we were used. And, uh, we still had a lot of, a lot of good to do in that company. And it could have changed, you know, the futures of a lot of people and a lot of companies, who knows, we were confident that we could make a big enough contribution to whatever company we were in. So. And I think the most frustrating thing is, Tony, you actually gave them another option. You said, hey, I'd like the Coliseum home video part of things. I mean, you gave them something else to say, "Okay, if not this, then that. So I've always found it to be like, what if he still was there? And then do we get Jr.? So I I don't know. It was something I saw that ran across my, you know, the social media timeline and just wanted to get your thoughts on it. Yeah, I, I don't know if, uh, you know, uh, Carl, I don't know how long I would have been able to stay there. Mm. Um, it's just a lot of things going on in my life at that time. And, uh, you know, when I first got there, JJ was there and JJ brought me in. He's the one that called me and said, would you like to come to work for Vince? Because Vince would like for you to come in. And, and I remember having dinner in Connecticut with JJ and his wife, who was Lindsay at that time. And Lois and I had dinner. And we were talking about our future in the WWF. Well, it turned sour very, very quickly. Uh, very quickly, Vince didn't like my work. Don't know why. And very quickly, he was he was not good to to JJ. So I left, and uh, Lois didn't want to live there. And JJ ended up leaving after that. Became very disenchanted with it. So I'm I'm not so sure. Even if I would have in 1990, in April of 1990, that year, if I would have not stayed, I'm not so sure how long I would have stayed. Had I, had I stayed, I'm not so sure how long I would have. It means we'd still be having this chat. Yeah. We means that Lauren would still be kicking ass as host. And yep. that's all I got, guys. Yeah. Well, Thank I, you. I, I say this every time. I'm glad I moved to Georgia. And the reason I am is because of that dog right there. I would have never met him. So there you go. We got two bugs besties. Actually, I just ordered a third because oh. we got a. We, we're going to do a little red one for the go dogs. Sorry, Lauren, little boy. Ew! Choke on those words as they come out of your mouth. We'll call it a falcon's red. We'll call it falcon's. There red. you go. I guess we'll go with that. All right. Well, falcons. thank you guys so much. I want to get to one final question. There can only be one. Okay. But first. <laughs> If you guys want to get the exclusive Bug Shivani trading card, it's available at buttsandseatscomic.com. Go check it out. Make sure you check out Arn Anderson across all social media platforms. He doesn't have shit to do with it. Spoiler alert, it's kayfabe. But (laughs) follow Arn Anderson. Follow Tony Shivani. Follow Ad Free Shows. Thank you all for joining us. Jimmy Lucas, you get the last question tonight, my friend. Sorry about that. Thank you. Hello, Tony and uh, Arn. Hey, Jimmy. Hello. Oh, sorry, Arn. It's okay. 
How you guys doing tonight? We're we're I'm doing great, man. That's awesome. How about you, Arn? Fantastic. That's awesome too. I got a question for both of you. Sure. What was your guys' reaction when you seen Sting and the Crow make up for the very first time? How'd you feel when you seen that? Uh, in the light of what uh, the NWO was doing, I thought it was pretty freaking cool. I really did. I really, I, I really bought into it. And it's kind of, you know, it's kind of become his calling card now, right? I mean, that's what he is. Yeah. So it's the, it's the gimmick or it's the makeup that it's led stood the test of time with him. I think that if Sting would have walked in, walked in AEW with the bleach blonde hair and colorful paint, we wouldn't have uh, popped as hard. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I was, I really bought into it. I liked it a lot. How about you, Arn? Yep. You know, it's hard when you have a gimmick. You know, he looked as good in some of those outfits as a baby face in the early 90s as anybody in the business. Right. I mean, he, he looked like a million dollars. He was tanned. He was in shape, had the hair, the gear, the whole thing. And uh, it's hard when you have something over like that to have a complete, whole total gimmick switch and it went from being as bright and as you can be to to a really dark character and i thought it fit the story more than anything you know nwo was kicking everybody's ass you know they were dominating the company they were destroying everything about wcw and when he showed up with that new look new motivation and if you understood the story it gave you hope as a WCW fan that, you know, they were going to be able to pull this thing out. And so I thought he, he was the leader of that company all along. And when he switched characters, he continued to be the leader of the company. So I thought it was a good thing. Awesome. Speaking of awesome, this zoom has been hands down one of my favorites. I want to thank everyone from adfreeshows.com for joining us. And especially thank you, Arn Anderson, Tony Giovanni. Tony, I have a spine buster coming your way from Arn Anderson on, on behalf of me, because you just don't want to hang out. Arn, handle that. Thanks. Maybe I'll just backhand him. It won't take a five <laughs> spine buster. Listen, I'm down for it. I'm here for it. Arn has my back. Tony Schiavone, we used to be friends. It's fine. Thanks, Thank Lauren. You. Thank you, you everyone. Great. Thanks, Lauren. You, you do a great job, Lauren. We appreciate yeah. you. Thank yeah. you both so much. Thanks. Everybody have a great night. Thanks for joining Thanks. us. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com.